Hello friends, Coolio here and welcome back to the channel. So guys, we are checking out a brand new casual MMORPG on the mobile platform called Stone Age World. Now if you guys enjoyed today's video and want to see more videos like this or have a game that you guys want me to check out, then make sure to let me know down below in the comments. If you liked today's video, then hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. So Stone Age World was just published last night. I put in a couple of hours into the game so far and I'm gonna let you guys know right up front. If you are not a big fan of autoplay MMOs, you're not gonna like this game. This game is 99% autoplay. Basically like the two, three hours I put in the game so far has been me clicking on a button, moving into a new area or talking to a new NPC, clicking the same button again and then moving to another area without me actually really doing anything. And even if you manually kind of take over, the movement of your characters just feels super, super weird. Now this game is published and developed by Netmarble and so like their games like Lineage 2 Revolution, a lot of similar mechanics to that. However, this is more targeted towards kids and people that like to collect monsters because this game does have an element of like Pokemon-ish behind it, which I definitely think is probably the best part of this game. Because even though I don't like autoplay MMOs that much, I have played them over the years, but I think the best part about this game definitely has to be its monster collecting because they do add a couple of different elements here and there that make it more unique than other games I've seen in like a similar vein of monster collecting. Ways that you can kind of go through and spend the time to grind or look for those special versions of specific pets or monsters. And there's kind of like a rarity behind specific monsters and stuff like that where you, you can kind of go through and customize it. Now, the combat in this game is it's similar to other kind of turn-based combat. You're gonna unlock auto combat really early in the game. That's probably what you're gonna be doing most of the time as you're playing anyway, which you can see I have right here. There is a little bit of a weird thing where like, if you do set on auto combat, you have to manually tell your monsters like, hey, I want you to use your ultimate ability or your active ability when you have enough energy. Now that may lead to some strategies later on where like, Maybe you want a monster that has like a healing active ability for them to focus specific on that while another monster has a really strong ultimate ability. But what I found so far is just to go through and set them all to ultimate so that your monsters actually use their ultimate abilities. Because if you don't set it, your monsters aren't going to do it. They're just going to do their basic attacks. Now you can go through and you can manually do combat. It's kind of like Pokemon, it kind of reminds me of like old school Final Fantasy as well where like you can attack, you can defend, or you can use like two different abilities, your ultimate or your active. But you're probably just going to be setting it to auto gameplay anyway because the biggest factor of this game is going around and actually collecting different monsters. Now I'm around level 27, I believe it's level 27 where it allows you to finally get the get pet icon on the left. There's a couple of different ways you can get it. You could turn on autoplay where like your character will just kind of run around by themselves getting experience points. Sometimes you can get eggs. You can take the eggs to the hatchery. I haven't found out a way to actually obtain pet eggs other than like the autoplay. There's a couple of these different shops, but they're like way up there, like level 50 unlock the shell shop. So I don't know exactly how all of this is going to work but I haven't been able to see it like in the cash shop where you can like go and buy eggs. However, there were items that you can buy that you can use to enhance your different monsters. So I'm a little bit worried already that there are hints. Well, not hints, but basically like right in your face, there's some pay to win elements. Now let's go ahead and actually talk about capturing. So as you're playing and running around the different maps and worlds and stuff, you'll encounter different monsters that you can, you can fight them, you can encounter them, you can catch them. But my favorite aspect so far has to be the fact that there are hidden pets. Different versions of the same pets that have different elemental types, but they're stronger than the other ones. Well, stronger sometimes. So before we actually go and actually capture a pet, let me show you one of the pets that I currently have right now. Now the first one I want to show you right here is this Zargra. Now you'll notice next to the name there's an A ranking next to it, which means its growth rate is exponential in certain parts. So I have an S plus tier to his attack growth, which means his attack increases exponentially like he's a really really good attacker he's got a good defense great uh, growth rate and so you want to go for those really high rarity growth rate monsters okay however this is a two star zargra i was able to find a three star zargra which does have a different look to it and different elemental type however this is only a b rated zargra which means the growth rate on it isn't as good as the other one it's a little bit spread out than the other version of my zargra is but i'm keeping my other zargra this one's only called the zarg but i'm keeping my other one because i like the attack stats now you can go through you can find those three star versions there are four star versions of certain pets that you can collect as well 
But the other part I want to talk about is you'll come across certain versions of monsters that have costumes equipped to, to them that are out in the world. Now, you'll notice this Zarger that I have kind of has bone armor. It's because I found another one that had bone armor already equipped. Once you catch it, that bone armor then goes into your inventory. You can then equip it to a monster of the same type and then it gives them some stats. However, it only lasts for like three days. So you have to go out and catch more and stuff, which I think it is kind of dumb, but we're going to head on over here. There is a Canino. We're going to see if we can't catch this capture pet. And there is a hidden three star version of it. So what you can do is there is an energy in this game that you can do. So I'm going to go ahead and hit capture. I'll jump into this quest. You'll notice that there is one that is wearing a costume. So what I might want to do is actually either punch it or throw a stone. Throwing stones costs energy. If you don't want to throw the stones, you can try to punch it. But throwing stones makes it it's a little bit easier to catch them because the rate increases. The lower the health of the monster, the higher the rate is, and you only have 10 turns to capture the monster that you want. So once the 10 turns are up, all monsters will run away and there's no way that you can, um, there's no way that you can catch them. Now you'll notice the one that I'm trying to go after is saying that it's preparing to escape. Now if I try to throw the rope and catch it, it's just gonna run away. So you actually have to spend more stamina to then throw a fence to block its escape. So I throw the fence up, now it can't escape, and now I can then attempt to try to catch it. There's a 96% chance. If it follows me all the way back, I have then succeeded at capturing it. Once you capture that specific pet or monster, there you go. So it's a B rated, I finally got some armor for it. And then what I want to do now is I can actually look around the map itself and see if I can't find myself another one. Here's a, another version of the same monster, this one's called a Fire Alpino. Capture pet. And then go ahead and engage with some energy. What are you doing? It's like right next to me. There we go. Okay, so I don't see the one that I want. I want the three star version. So what I can do is actually exit it, hit OK, and I'll retreat. However, it does cost stamina every single time you do this. It costs that three stamina. You don't get it refunded. So it is a way that you can kind of hope and mindlessly grind, I want to say, to try to get the rare versions of monsters. I've been doing this a few times. I've been lucky, I think, once in my last like three hours of gameplay to actually come across a four star monster. Um, however, I wasn't able to catch it because in order to capture certain rare monsters, they like stand behind other ones. You have to clear the ones in the front row in order to capture the ones in the back row. So I'll do this maybe two more times and maybe we'll get lucky and see one. But I doubt it because it, they're pretty rare to find these alternate versions, but they're the ones that are the strongest. But not only do you have to like try to capture the alternate versions, the three star versions, but you also want to hope they have a really good growth rate. Now, unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to find it. Just go ahead and skip past that. So some of the other stuff that you can do in this game, there's actually quite a lot of like little side activities that unlock as you play throughout the game You can click up here on the life. So right now I have the 100 challenges dojo and the normal mode unlocked. There's also party play where you can like jump in with other people and play for advanced hunts, dark souls, you get more materials. Um, however, right now it does look like it takes a little bit of time to unlock a lot of this stuff, but I'm kind of glad that they do have a lot of different activities that you can do. Some of them are only available on certain days as well. Like the trial of land is every single day. However, the pet project hide and seek only available during certain times of day. I've seen a lot of mobile MMOs do stuff like this where like they try to get you to come back into the game you know, back into the game continuously, like as often as you can. Now, when it comes to actually going through and upgrading your, uh, your different monsters and your pets, you can go through, and you can upgrade them by giving them uh, meat. So I'm going to level this guy up. Oh, I guess I was auto questing. Now he's level 27. Now your monsters can't go past your character level. So if you're level 27, your monsters can go only go up to level 27. So you can't like push them really, really far. You can also go through and upgrade the stars, but I haven't unlocked that yet. You do need to get to level 27 in order to do that. Um, the growth rate system, which I already showed you, that shows you which stats kind of grow faster than others as you play through and they level up. Now the skill, there's the skill system. However, I haven't been able to go through and actually upgrade them because in order to do that, the Zarga needs to get to level 30. You gotta get to level 30. I'm probably not gonna play much after this anyway. Now this research thing is what I was talking about before, how there are certain pay to win elements where you can actually go into the cash shop and buy monster tokens, which you can then use to upgrade their stats here. So honestly, that's ugh, like that. It's definitely a very clear pay to win thing behind it. So. If I wanted to, I could go into the shop, spend money, get monster tokens, and then I could max out their stats as high as they possibly can go right now. So, max them out. There we go. 
and max out the number of selectable research. So if I wanted to, I need to then go through and upgrade it. So I don't know exactly how far this pay to win is going to happen to it, but you can clearly go in and get those. Other ways you can get it too is if you get monsters that you don't want anymore, you can actually go and you can dismiss them. But we'll go ahead and dismiss these two. Confirm. And then you get pet coins. So, I mean, you could grind it if you wanted to. If you wanted to spend the time to go and catch like tons of different monsters. Look at that. Someone has a three star over here that has the armor equipped. So you want to go for those three stars. You want to find the armor and then you can go and you can kind of customize it. I do like that kind of aspect of like trying to find the rare versions of monsters and the costume versions of monsters. Other than that, this is a straight up just autoplay, pay to win mobile MMO. There's nothing really that makes it stand out to me besides the fact that you can catch monsters. So if you're really, if you're really digging that, you may enjoy this game. If you're not a big fan of autoplay MMOs, you're probably not going to like this game. So you guys go. This is Stone Age World. If you guys enjoyed today's video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Okay, friends, my name is Coolio, and I'll see you next time.